Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how I created this realistic living room in Enscape. We're going to go through everything, the materials, the lighting, and the visual settings, as well as the composition. But please make sure to stay around until the end of the video because every single second of this video is crucial for you to get realistic results in Enscape. Okay, so we're gonna first get started with the material. This is what we have in Enscape, and then this is what we have in SketchUp. So what we're interested in right now is just to see how I configured the materials for this scene. What we're gonna look first here is this rough wall texture. So to select that, first I'm gonna open the Enscape material settings. I'm gonna press B and I'm gonna hold Alt to pick up this material. So as you can tell, uh, the texture of this material in itself without any displacement or without any bumps it is a rough wall texture with kind of a cream kind of color a little beige uh, per se so this is the plain texture but obviously to make it more realistic we have to take a look at all of the other components we put on a bump map which is the one that will be used for this wall and i turned it up to three if we go up close to the wall you can see the difference of when the bump map is set at zero and then when it's tuned up a bit so 10 is off obviously too much but three works perfectly fine something else that we can do is we could also use a displacement map but as you can see that is a lot more extreme of a case and it's probably not the best case used in a wall so i usually like to use the bump map for walls and these kind of texture so i'm going to set that to three once again if you take a look back now you can see that it has depth and it looks much more realistic than if it didn't have a bump map so if i go to zero once again even further back you can see the difference that it does if you are serious about getting realistic results in enscape you need to get the enscape expert course you have a limited time offer waiting for you in the description this course will help you get realistic results in enscape it has subtitles in English, in Spanish, in German, in Hindi, and Indonesian. So it's inclusive for everyone. Make sure to sign up right now in the link in the description. If you think that what I show in my YouTube videos is valuable, then believe me, it's just a fraction of what I show in the course. So make your life easier and sign up now in the link in the description. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the reflection section of this wall material. So the default Enscape setting for uh, the reflection is to have the roughness at 90%. I usually like to lower this down a bit because if you notice in nature and in real life, I mean, all of the materials have a little bit of reflection to that. And 90% is not enough to have reflection or the roughness parameter for this kind of wall. So I would probably tune that down a bit to around, let's say 65%. And you can see the difference uh, between 65% and 90. So if I put the 90 once again, you can see that it's less reflective and it's kind of more plain. So we need a little bit more depth and reflection on this wall. So I'm gonna put that at 65%. And then the specular option is usually fine if we leave it at 50. But we can always play around with that as well. Obviously 100% is way too much. We can do that. I will leave 60 to 70 would be fine. So we're gonna leave it like this. As you can see, the wall looks much more realistic and much better than it previously was. Uh, the transparency option is something that we don't have to do anything about right now so this was pretty much it for the wall and the texture the rough texture behind uh something else that you might probably be interested in is the fabric material so i'm going to go up close with the fabric material i'm going to open the sk material editor once again and then i'm going to choose the fabric material with the alt key so here the base texture is very simple it's a fabric material kind of a beige color as well uh, but what makes it look realistic is again the bug map it gives depth uh, to the material this one is to 450 we can do the higher let's say eight but this would be too much it almost looks like the sofa has spikes and not bumps so i'm going to tone that down back to 4.5 or maybe even four so it's a bit softer so we're going to take another look at the reflection here uh the fact this kind of fabric material doesn't have too much reflection but still 90 percent would be too much for the parameter so i'm just going to tone that down to 80 percent the specular option we're not going to touch that as well. It looks well enough as it looks right now. So this is pretty much it for the fabric material as well. Something else that you might be interested in is the carpet. So the carpet looks quite well from far away. So for the angle that I took the render. But I mean, you can call it carpet, rug, whatever. 
but if you go up close, you can see that it's not actually that high quality of a texture. I didn't do much with this carpet, but what I will do to make it even better is make the bug map a little bit even higher. So let's say six. Uh, so now it has a little bit more bumps and it looks a bit more realistic from far away. So yeah, it kind of looks more 3D than it previously was. Now, something that has been very requested in all of the videos is on how to get the right way to look on the curtains let's take a look, quick look okay let me select this curtain right here and then let me take off what i did so this is the curtain in natural uh i mean in the default settings that Escape has so what a lot of people do when they try to do the curtain realistic they change the opacity or the transparency of the curtain but if we do that if we go here and we could we change that as you can see it doesn't look realistic at all it almost looks it kind of has like a black uh fabric look in a way so this is not most of the time how we want the curtains to look what i do to make them look way better and more realistic is i go to cut out and i import a map like this one for example it's kind of a mesh and you can just choose this one and then as you can see we have applied to realistic curtain material now to make it even more realistic what we can do is we can make it a bit and change it to self-illuminated that way it looks even more white but we can tone down the luminous a bit and now it just looks way more realistic this is pretty much it for the materials i covered the basics of the scene but now let's move on to lighting all right so now that we're done with the materials now we're going to get started with the second section of this video which is lighting in order for me to showcase this in the best possible way i'm going to turn off the existing layer of the existing lighting that I have in the scene right now. So I'm just going to click this one. And as you can see, this is what the scene would look like in the escape default settings. Obviously, you wouldn't want your renders to look like this, but maybe you could tweak it up a bit with the escape sun or something like that. But I still don't believe you would get the results as you would get with using the what I like to call fake lighting. So how we would do that? There's two different options that we can go with that. The first one is much easier one and maybe a little bit simpler. The second one is a little bit more advanced and which is the one that I used in the thumbnail as well as in the intro of the video. So I'm going to make the window, the escape window smaller. Once again, I'm going to open the escape lighting objects and I'm going to select the rectangular lighting. So what I like to do with the rectangular lighting is I want to create rectangular lights where the light comes from in the window. So I created this light. I'm going to change the dimensions of it a little bit. I'm going to get it in the other side of the curtain that way. Uh, it's not blocked by it and there's not any weird shadows casting from it. So I'm going to change the dimensions of it. I'm going to make it as big as the windows itself and I'm going to duplicate it uh, right here. Let me take that, let me move that back a little bit and let's see what we can get from this. So I'm going to make the lights a bit more brighter and see what it changes. And this is the result that we would get to the rectangular light, which is not that bad. This is actually looks uh, very well. It could look even better with some changes that we could do the directions and all of that to want to make it more advanced this way you can definitely do this way it's nothing wrong with it it's just that for this render i use something else i'm going to go back and i'm going to delete these two rectangular lights and i'm going to turn on once again uh the layer that had the lighting on so if i open this you can see that there's more depth with this kind of lighting than the previous one and you can see that there's more softer shadows in that way so how I achieve this is basically with spotlights. So I created a bunch of spotlights that come in direction as in the sun is coming in from the window and I just directed them into our room. One way to do this easier. So let's say uh, these don't exist once again. Uh, I'm gonna go and create the spotlight right here. And I'm gonna take it a little bit further back and I'm gonna change the height of it. So around here. I'm going to make the beam angle as big as possible. Maybe I go a little further down as well. I'm going to change the angle to something like this and a little bit like this. Now, I will just multiply this times, let's say I copy it once for the control uh, key. And then once I copy it, I can just type in 7x and enter in SketchUp. And as you can see, it's multiplied. But now we also want to multiply it vertically and I just click the M key 
M control once again, multiply it once like this, and then let's press seven X once again. Uh, maybe we can move this a little bit to the left as well. And now we can turn off the luminous intensity in and skip objects tab. And as you can see, this is pretty much what I created and what it looked like in the thumbnail. So try this out. Uh, maybe you can use some other fake lighting in the interior, maybe to emphasize the furniture or something like that. But it was as simple as this for this scene and it came out looking great. Okay, so now we're in the final part of the video, which is the visual settings. I don't really like to use the auto exposure option that Enscape has most of the time. So I just turn it off and I'll play around with it myself. Uh, but it looks fine like this and in fact, it's bright enough. So uh, not much else that I would change here. Obviously, try to keep the rendering quality as high as possible. I turn ultra for mine and the depth of field could be used if there's closer up shots or something like that but in this case i didn't use any of that the outlines sometimes it's good to have them on just for a bit to kind of add maybe a bit more depth between the elements but if you turn it off completely it doesn't make much difference anyway but keeping it at 10 or something like that uh, kind of emphasizes uh the outlines of the objects this is something that i rarely do so uh it's fine even if you don't use it add the corrections uh, what I would do is I would turn off auto contrast and I would like to keep the shadows down a little bit because I just think there's too much contrast with the auto contrast in this scene. Uh, the highlights look good though, but I would like the shadows a bit uh, less emphasized. So if I do the shadows to something like minus 60% and then do the highlights something at 20%, I believe this looks much, much better than uh, it previously did. The saturation, I always like to keep it at around 110 because I believe that the default Enscape saturation uh, makes it look too plain in that sense. Color temperature, I wouldn't play that uh, with that too much in this scene. Uh, it looks completely fire right now, so I just keep that default. The atmosphere settings, nothing much I would change. The sun brightness is usually much higher in Enscape, but as you can see, that makes it look uh, way too reddish and I just keep it at zero because it's lit enough with the fake lighting as I showed you. The shadow sharpness, I like to keep the shadows as soft as possible. So I just do 0% or sometimes I leave it at 20% just to have maybe more sharpness in the shadows. So if the sun is stronger and it has more intensity, then the sharpness of the shadows show that. The artificial light brightness is at default. That works completely fine for me. The ambient brightness, uh, it doesn't make much difference in this scene anyway. There's some scenes that it makes a difference, but not as of now, so we can just leave that to default as well. I put an HDRI in the sky. Uh, that makes a difference sometimes because the interior reflects uh, what the HDRI shows. So uh, if we turn it off in this scene, not much of a difference. It's more for background purposes, but the curtain is covering that, so we can leave it uh, there. And then at the output, I'm gonna do Ultra HD because uh, the computer can handle that, but obviously a full HD would be fine as well. And this is pretty much it for the visual setting as well. It's pretty simple. I just show you a bunch of information for the most important steps of creating renders. If you enjoyed watching this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Once again, make sure to check out the course in the first link in the description. Make your life easier, learn Enscape, change the way you think about renders, change the way you approach your work and just change your life in general because Enscape definitely changed my life.